right? Oh, yeah. Good morning, everybody. It is uh, Thursday, the end of our holiday work week, our holiday worship week. So good to be together today. <clears throat> Pardon me. If you are watching on Facebook or on YouTube, please add some, uh, if you have intercessions, add them to the comment section and we will read them either live during the service or on YouTube, we will uh, pray them at our next daily office on Monday morning. So today is the feast, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's still the morning, I apologize. Today is the feast of Priscilla and Ekla, pardon my pronunciation. They Aquila. are- hmm? Aquila. Aquila, see, I'm already, there we go. Priscilla <laughs> and Aquila. They lived in the first century, first century. They were contemporaries, contemporaries of Paul. They were uh, Jewish Christians who had been expelled from Rome and moved to Corinth where they met Paul. And he stayed with them for a year, 18 months. They were tent makers together and uh, they partnered with him in ministry mm -hmm. and went with him to Ephesus. Um, among the things they are known for is having <clears throat> met Apollos and uh, he was a, a known uh, uh, he was preaching the gospel. He was an evangelist. He knew of the baptism of Christ, but not of the Holy Spirit. And they heard that he was close, but not quite there. Took him aside, kind of clarified things and sent him on his way to preach uh, the gospel as we know it today. Uh, it is important that they are, they are known together. They were a married couple. They were remembered as being partners in life and in ministry. Uh, more often than not, <clears throat> pardon me, Priscilla's name is uh, named first, um, giving her, uh, acknowledging that she is not uh, subordinate to her husband, but an equal partner. And many times she was the one who did uh, did the preaching and did the teaching. And there is some debate. She may be the anonymous author, author to the letter of the letter to the Hebrews. So, um, and they were martyred together later. <laughs> they, were also, they were also Paul's companions in his journey to Jerusalem to face charges <clears throat> when he uh, took the vow and shaved his head. Okay. So. Yeah, they were they were part of that group of companions that journeyed with him. So okay. So we remember Priscilla and Aquila. <clears throat> Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me for the antiphon and invitatory. God is the rock of our salvation. O come, let us worship. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lambs. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. 
He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. God is the rock of our salvation. O oh, come, let us worship. Our Psalm today is the first half of Psalm 18. I will lead with the odd verses. Please respond with the even. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so I shall be saved from my enemies. The cords of death encompassed me, the torrents of perdition assailed me. The cords of Sheol entangled me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I cried for help. In his temple, he heard my voice. And my, and my cry to him reached his ears. Then the earth reeled and rocked. The foundations also of the mountains trembled and quaked because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. Glowing coals flamed forth from him. He bowed the heavens and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. He rode on a cherub and flew. He came swiftly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering around him, his canopy thick clouds with water. Out, with the, out of the brightness before him, there yeah. broke through his clouds, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the Most High uttered his voice. He sent out his arrows and scattered them, <clears throat> flashed forth lightnings and routed them. Then the channels of the sea were seen, and the foundations of the world were laid bare. At your, your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He reached down from on high, he took me, he drew me out of mighty waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted, they confronted me in the day of my calamity but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he recompensed me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. And Saul's servant said to him, See now, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord now command the servants who attend you to look for someone who is skillful in playing the lyre. And when the evil spirit from God is upon you, he will play it, and you will feel better. So Saul said to his servants, Provide for me someone who can play well and bring him to me. One of the young men answered, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who's skillful in playing, a man of valor, a warrior, prudent in speech, and a man of good presence. And the Lord is with him. So Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, send me your son, David, who is with the sheep. Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine, and a kid and sent them by his son David to Saul. And David came to Saul and entered his service. Saul loved him greatly and he became his armor bearer. Saul sent Jesse saying, let David remain in my service for he has found favor in my sight. And whenever the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, David took the lyre and played it with his hand and Saul would be relieved and feel better and the evil spirit would depart from him. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle. They were gathered at Soka, which belongs to Judah, and encamped between Soka and Azekiah in <laughs> Ethes Damon. 
Saul and the Israelites gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah and formed ranks against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on the mountain on the one side and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side with a valley between them. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a helmet of bronze on his head and he was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. He had greaves of bronze on his legs and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron and his shield bearer went before him. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, why have you come out to draw up for battle? Excuse me. Am I not a Philistine? And are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. <clears throat> and the Philistine said, today I defy the ranks of Israel. The ranks of Israel. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all the Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good job, Nancy. Lots of names over there. <clears throat> Our first canticle this morning is the Song of Zechariah together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, should be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now, while Peter was greatly puzzled about what to make of the vision that he had seen, suddenly the men sent by Cornelius appeared. They were asking for Simon's house and were standing by the gate. They called out to ask whether Simon, who was called Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, look, three men are searching for you. Now get up, go down and go with them without hesitation, for I have sent them. So Peter went down to the men and said, I am the one you are looking for. What is the reason for your coming? They answered, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man who is well spoken of by the whole Jewish nation, was directed by a holy angel to send for you to come to his house and to hear what you have to say. So Peter invited them in and gave them lodging. The next day he got up and went with them, and some of the believers from Joppa came, accompanied him. The following day they came to Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. On Peter's arrival, Cornelius met him and falling at his feet worshipped him. But Peter made him get up saying, stand up, I am only a mortal. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that had assembled and he said to them, you yourselves know that it is unlawful for a Jew to associate with or to visit a Gentile, but God has shown me that I should not call anyone profane or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. Now may I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius replied, four days ago at this very hour at three o'clock, I was praying in my house when suddenly a man in dazzling clothes stood before me. He said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your alms have been remembered before God. Send therefore to Joppa and ask for Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying in the home of Simon a Tanner by the sea. 
Therefore, I sent for you immediately, and you have been kind enough to come. So now all of us are here in the presence of God to listen to all that the Lord has commanded you to say. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle this morning is Glory to God, the Gloria, together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. And Hold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. God of grace and might, who gave to your servants Aquila and Priscilla gifts of zeal and eloquence to make known the truth of the gospel. Raise up, we pray, in every country, heralds and evangelists of your kingdom, so that the world may know the immeasurable riches of our Son, our sa of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, and all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in a prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon where there is discord, union, where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. We pray for Christine's family as her mother is in surgery right now. And as 
another family member is in hospice and others are seeking to offer all the support they can to those who are having health crises. We pray for St. Peter's as the thrift shop prepares for a tent sale this weekend, Christmas in July. We pray for the people in Haiti, that they may, they may have peace. And we pray for all those who are in the path of Elsa, that they may have safety. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me for the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised to your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, everybody, for being together today, this morning. We have, uh, again, a busy day. It is always busy at St. Peter's. Um, watch for a rector's blog and a rector's vlog and the e-news coming out uh, later this afternoon. Uh, we'll be together again at 5 o'clock for evening prayer and uh, taking a Sabbath rest. And Saturday, we get super busy with the men's breakfast and the two-day uh, thrift shop tent sale, Christmas in July. And bonus, the regular thrift shop will be open on Sunday as well. And we were together again in person for in, uh, church worship on Sunday. Please take advantage of Sign Up Genius so we can uh, safely uh, Fill the pews. Fill the pews. Thank you. Kind of stumbled there. If you are watching on YouTube, please consider liking and subscribing, ringing, uh, ring the bell for notifications. So all that cool stuff I just mentioned, you will know as soon as it is published. So until five o'clock, have a great day. Be safe, be warm, and uh, we will see you soon. Cool. Stay cool. That Stay cool. It is warm. Be cool. <laughs> Almost made it. I was doing so well. <laughs> Take care and God bless. Bye. Bye.